Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and thank you for joining us on this TD590 build. Now in the last episode, we installed a single mass flywheel clutch, we installed the front bushes onto the front arms, they're a bit of a pain. We've installed our shock springs, a diff pinion seal at the back, the A-frame ball joint at the back, and we also included a, an, up, an uprated anti-roll bar at the rear to, to stiffen that rear end when we're doing cornering. Now in this episode, uh, I hope to cover a number of other kind of upgrades and I'm hoping that we can install our stage two kit on the front uh, but the last episode, I missed out the rear bushes on the trailing arms, the rear shocks and springs. So I'm going to jump on that now, try and get that done, and then we can bring it back down and I can try and focus on this front end where I've noticed that the condenser's damaged. So hopefully we can replace that and uh, get on with our stage two kit. Okay guys, so that is our rear suspension installed and this is really starting to piece together now. We've got a really premium kit set up on here now. So we've got a nice uprated anti-roll bolt to keep the rear end stiff during cornering. Got a nice comfortable spring on here and we've got our awesome Fox shocks on here. So this is gonna really transform the way this vehicle rides. And we've now done the front suspension, the rear suspension. I'm happy to say that that's all done, but I've missed out the rear arms. So I'm just gonna jump on those, do those now, get those new bushings in, press in, press in the ones on the rear and change these ones at the front here. And then we can jump to something else at the front end.
Okay guys, so that is our full vehicle bushing set done and our vehicle suspension. So that's really cool. Now that that's out of the way, um, we've done the boring stuff, if you will. The suspension's quite fun, obviously, but it's just like a heavy mechanical stuff, not too shiny. But now I wanna basically do the stage two power kit. Um, and the first thing we noticed when we first pulled off the grill was that the condenser was, was absolutely knackered and shot to pieces. So this is the aircon radiator, essentially. This is what cools the refrigerant. Um, but you can just see that it's all very much worse wear and requires replacement. So we've got a new condenser here. Um, of course, we're gonna be sort of repairing this vehicle first and then modifying. So luckily we had this vehicle degassed when we noticed. So there is no refrigerant in the system, which means that we can unplug it and replace it with a brand new unit. So you can't just replace just the condenser itself. You have to buy the whole kit with a new fan and a new shroud. Uh, I'm not quite sure why that is the case. But, alas, that's what you have to go and buy. So, you can clearly see here, we've got our brand new condenser unit and shroud. There's no point us doing all of this performance work and having this rusty old radiator be the front of it. So, we've got a brand new unit here, and this will be really nice sitting up front. It comes with a brand new fan, and we can just install this whole unit. Again, this is aluminium, and they paint them to protect them, but this one has just seen, you know, 20 odd years. So. It's just you for replacement. Okay, so first step to our stage two kit, we're gonna be removing our grill surround, then we're gonna remove our broken condenser, then we're gonna take out the standard intercooler, then we can do a bit of modification to the radiator to fit our huge fast road intercooler, then we can replace our new condenser, our grill surround, and then we can jump on to the other parts of the stage two kit. Okay guys, so that is our standard Land Rover intercooler removed and obviously we're replacing this because we're going to be upgrading the horsepower of this engine from 120 to around 185 and a lot more torque. Now the purpose of an intercooler is to lower the inlet temperatures you know, under load and under boost, so if you're going up a hill and you're towing a horse trailer, this is going to be very important, equally the same as if we had a stage two kit because we're going to need to reduce those inlet temperatures so the engine has more oxygen to burn, which in turn leads to more performance. Now these don't, the, the fast red intercooler doesn't fit standard on against the, the standard radiator and that's because there's a couple of things in the way, which are these little blocks here, which I assume are manufacturing molds or they're for a different model of vehicle. Now they don't hold any coolant, so we just need to nip these off and you can use any tool. Um, I usually use whatever's around really, just a bit of an ac accuracy and just make sure you go slow, but you can nip these off.
Okay guys, that is our fast road intercooler installed. And just look at the size of this thing. It's almost double the size of the original factory Land Rover unit. So that is really gonna help when it comes to keeping our inlet temperatures down when we're putting some performance through this thing. So that's really cool that's installed and it'll be such a shame to bolt that old rusty condenser to it. So we've got a fresh unit here that we can install that to now. And then we bolt this front end together and we're done with the performance under this part of it and we can crack on with something else. <laughs> oh. Okay guys, so we've installed our fast road intercooler. Now next up is to help the engine draw in more air and that's gonna be through the air filter. I'm gonna pop, pop the lid off and we can put in our new air filter. So this is a standard one here. Reasonably clean, boring. So we've got a new one here, which is made of cotton. I never use the, um, what's, the what's the other, like the, uh, the foam gauze ones? Because when you, when, you, when you do get them wet, they tend to disintegrate and then they end up going through your turbo or your math sensor, something like that. So I always use the cotton ones because they're protected by this full, you know, the mesh gauze. So it prevents any, if it does, if it does disintegrate, it's not gonna go into your intake, it's not gonna damage the vehicle in any way, shape or form. And cotton is washable, lasts longer. Um, so these are pretty good value, again, it allows about 25% more air, which is great because obviously we're going to be demanding more of this engine, so it needs to breathe better, hence the, the air filter, the exhaust, the intercooler. We're just upgrading the whole system here. So nice and easy, pop one of these in. Okay, so that's our air filter installed and our high flow intercooler. Now what's next is gonna be an EGR delete. Okay guys, so as part of our stage two package, we're gonna be removing the EGR valve. EGR stands for exhaust gas recirculation. And basically what it does is it takes a percentage of the exhaust gases which are hot and feeds it back into the inlet where it's breathing its clean air. Now this is supposed to redigest its, its you know, its it's exhaust gases for emissions and it does work, but at the cost of the engine's life. Now, you can imagine if it's breathing a percentage of exhaust soot and it comes back round and is, is going through the engine, um, then basically what happens is the inlet gets all full up of, of diesel soot and it becomes like cholesterol for cars. It starts to really reduce all the airways, it blocks all the math sensors, it just makes a real mess of the engine and for not really much benefit in my mind. So we're gonna blanket it off and basically what we should be getting here is we should be getting cooler inlet temperatures, which is fantastic, because obviously we fitted that huge front out intercooler. So everything's gonna be working in harmony. We're gonna cool those gases down. It's gonna be getting only clean air once we blank this off. And then it will give a really nice cleaner burn so we get the best performance out of it, the best miles per gallon, less maintenance, and maybe a slight increase in my, uh, miles per gallon. So who knows? Definitely an, uh, one of these things that must be fitted to these engines, or any engine really, um, in my book. So let's take this old one off. I'll show you the old one. It's probably not that dirty, but 64K, maybe it is, who knows? We'll have a look. So let's get this one fitted.
Okay guys, we've finished installing our EGR delete kit. I'll run you through what happens. So clean air fresh from outside will come in through the corner of the wing. It travels up the pipe work, goes into the air box to be filtered, and then comes out down through the intake and directly into the turbo. Now the turbo compresses the fresh air, heats it up, travels through the intercooler. Our huge front mount intercooler will cool that air down. It then comes back up and goes straight into the inlet and directly to the engine. Now previously, what's gonna happen is some of that exhaust gas would have come here through the EGR cooler. It now gets blocked off before getting fed back into the engine. So all getting is clean, cool, compressed air for maximum performance. Okay, so Tom's doing the soundproofing. We've done the Fox shocks. We haven't done the Bilson damper because we're waiting for the exhaust. We've done the springs, the roll bar. Um, we've done the chassis bushes, single mass flow or clutch. Bows. next thing, which I'm dreading, but it's, it's really good for the car, is the rear window rebuild. So I'm gonna jump on that, take the windows out, split them all down and rebuild the seals. And rather than just replacing the felt seal, I'm gonna upgrade it with the Garrison Outfitters kit, which I really rate. It's a lot more work in terms of stripping down, but it's a lifetime solution. There's no rattling. And um, it's just really good for these earlier TD5s and the sort of 300 rear windows. They're not like a sealed unit. You can split them all down, rebuild them all properly with the correct seals, clean everything up, reassemble it, reboot it all back onto the body, and that problem is done. So I'm gonna jump on that now and drill these windows out. So the problem with the earlier windows, um, this is pre-Puma, um, is they've got a felt seal which runs around the top and the bottom, and that tends to turn into a bit of a mulch after just years and years of weathering, etc. When you're driving along, all you can hear in the back behind you is this constant rattling. Now you can just replace the felt seal quite quickly, cheaply and easily with a just another genuine felt seal. Um, however, the problem just keeps coming back. Now there is a kit provided by Garrison Outfitters, it's very good, but it involves having to strip the whole window out of the body, strip it all down to the glass and then put in an upgraded seal. Now I much prefer this because it's done once, it's done properly and you never have to do it again. So that's what I'm doing on this vehicle here. And the first step is gonna be removing this trim just here so that we can strip out and de-rivet, take all the rivets out the body, and pull the glass out and put it on the workbench. So with all the rivets removed, I can see that somebody's put some sealant around here before, it might have been leaking, um, but we can, we can put a bit of sealing agent when we reassemble it. But it should now be free to snap out of the body. The sealant might stop us a little bit. And there we have it. One window removed, we can take it over to the workbench and start stripping it down. So our window's on the table and we can now strip it down and refit it with the instructions provided by Garrison Outfitters. Now I'm gonna grab my bottle of Goo Gun. Using the supplied Goo Gun. <laughs> <laughs> grab your bottle of Goo Gun, Goo Gun. Goo Gun, Goo Gun. Okay guys, so I've done these before on this channel. And if you want to check them out, you can have a look at the previous, the green TD5 build. There's a bit more in depth about how I did these. So I'm going to steam straight into these and just get these things rebuilt. But first I'm going to grab my bottle of Goo Gun. Goo Gun. So we've got to leave our bottle of Gugan soaking for about 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, and that allows me the time to basically drill out the other side, remove the other window. And hopefully by the time I've done that and maybe a cup of tea, then I can uh, basically clean this all up and start putting the seal into this window.
gonna leave our bottle of Gulga. Uh, we're gonna leave that soaking in there for about 20 minutes, half hour, 45 minutes, whatever, just until it's just, just melted or whatever it does. Worked its magic on the inside of the frame. Um, I am gonna help it after about 15 minutes with a screwdriver, just scrape it all out because it does seem to get a little bit stiff. And uh, then we'll use brake clean just to get rid of the, the sort of residue and then we can install a new seal. So let's go uh, pop the kettle on or something. Okay, so that's both windows rebuilt. That's really good and that's a permanent fix as well. So we won't have to be doing this ever again. Now, obviously the owner, there was a bead of sealant around these, so we're gonna do the same. We're gonna reseal them to the body, re-rivet them, and then we can get on with something else. So you can see here all the windscreen seal is perished and that will be allowing water straight in and straight into the foot wells as well as rotting out the inside of the bulkhead which is really bad news for one of these. So Leon's going to start cutting it out and we can start replacing the seal. Yes, so it was a bit of effort, but it was because it was, it's been bonded at some point in its life, either it's been replaced or the factory, we found them where they haven't been bonded or they have. Um, that was nice, pull it out from the inside and uh, prevented it from cracking, which annoyingly is quite a common occurrence on these. Just as common as that. <sighs> Juice motor sound speaking, how can I help? Okay, get them have a new steering guard which I'm really excited to see. Now it's a nice non-branded one and we've gone for apparently silver when I ordered black. <sighs> Why is no one good at their job? Okay guys, so we've just come back from the paint shop and we picked up all these trims which have been done in Santorini black, which look absolutely amazing. It's all the factory stuff as well, apart from we've gone for a number of sort of upgrades, just minor, which is just on the wing top vents, just upgraded a few of the trims where they were sort of Land Rover sort of cheaped out. So again, just fitting in with this sort of performance factory kind of style. And we chose to upgrade the whole front end as well. So we're gonna fit a DRL bumper just to freshen up that front end even more so. 
And um, I'm really excited to get this fitted. So I think what we're gonna do now is strip off this grill surround, clean up the whole front end, change the headlights, fit the new bumper, fit the, all the smoked front ends so we can see everything and we can look at this front end and see what it's gonna look like. So we'll get on with that now.
amazing. Just look at that front end. I think that's exactly how a vehicle of this year or even any black one, it just looks amazing with a black pack. We haven't gone too far with it. I think this is exactly how, you know, it's like OEM plus. It's a bit, it's obviously modified, but it hasn't, we haven't gone too far with it. I think it looks really, really nice. It's subtle, it's classy. There's a design aspect to it. We've blacked out the whole front end. Everything's of high quality. It's all the original grill set. And you know, there's no need to buy new grills or anything. I think they look absolutely amazing. And the painter's choice to go Santa any black rather than 2K, I think has made the difference. It's really lifted it to a premium feel. So next thing to go on, we, now that we've done all the engine work, we can grab the bonnet, we can pop that back on, close the lid, and we can have a look at the front end in general. And then uh, I think we'll wrap the video up for there. So we'll grab that bonnet and pop it on. Let's see these lights in action and just see, you know, it's gonna lift it into the 21st century. So Tom, if you can jump in the car and flip the ignition on. So we've wired them up so that they're ignition controlled. So when the ignition's on, you've got your DRLs all the time. And then when the headlights come on, they'll switch off, which is for MOT regulations. So give it a go. See, that's really smart. This will be your everyday, these are always on. And then put the headlights on, Tom. They'll switch off because it's got a module, which is great. So for MOT regulations, they have to switch off. And those headlights are looking really crisp. We're gonna wrap the video up there. I hope you really enjoyed watching this video and I hope you're enjoying this build in particular. Please don't forget to subscribe. Tell me what you think in the comments and don't forget to follow us on Instagram, which is at Juice Motors. And I'll see you guys for the next one.